Proper rope management is really something that distinguishes the professional from an amateur. Today we will look at adjusting the difference between your and your partner on the same rope and also on how to manage your coil properly. Hey guys, welcome to the high ground. My name is Fabio and today we are having another video about rope craft. We will talk about the situation that you are tied to a friend of yours with a rope <laughs> while you're on a mountain and you need different lengths of rope between you. You might want to have a different length of rope if you short rope somebody compared to if you're traveling a glacier or if you're doing micro pitches. And I'll show you how to really handle the rope properly and how to, to, how to do the transitions. As with everything, there are real principles to all of this and I will explain them while we go through the steps of how to handle the rope. The first thing we have to do is to tie ourselves into the rope. And there already starts a little bit the dis discussion and strategizing what you will need on the route. Because you of course have the possibility to take the length of rope you need and put anything else into your backpack. That's totally fine if you are on a climb that doesn't require a lot of changes in the length of rope between you and your climbing partner. It has a few disadvantages. First of all, you have to tie yourself into the rope with, with a knot and a carabiner but also you will have the rope somewhat dangling from your backpack to your harness and you can hook somebody with the, or hook uh, something with the rope and then it gets pulled out so it's it's not optimal but especially for climbs where you really just stay in the same configuration for example long glacier travel it's really something worth to consider because having the rope in the backpack is just more comfortable, especially from a breathability perspective, compared to having an alpine coil around your body. Now, if you want to do that and really tie into the rope, as said, just take a clove hitch or take an alpine butterfly knot. I have explain, explanations on how to do those two knots um, in other videos. I will link them below in the description. And you tie yourself into a triple lock carabiner, something like that, tie it to the rope, and put it onto the belay loop and then you're good. Now, this is not the situation we're talking about today. Today we're really talking about tying yourself into the end of the, uh, of the rope and then taking up coils and how to fix them. For tying in, what we always can do is a double figure of eight knot. And also, if you don't know how to do this knot or how to tie this knot, there is also a link in the description. The double of uh, the figure of eight knot has one disadvantage. If there is no force on it, if it is not pull, it is really only loose dangling here, it's possible that it opens up. And since you're taking up a coil and transferring the actual load of your partner, so anything that pulls on the rope, to a different knot that I will show you later, it is possible that you are in this situation. So the figure of eight is not the best choice. What I would recommend is what we call the asymmetric guide knot. And you're basically just preparing an overhand knot. You're threading it through. And then you're following the overhand knot back through the knot, something like that. Okay, and I will of course show you that one all in detail a little bit later. Okay, like that. And now you have two pairs, one here, one here. You open up the lower pair, go around with the loose end, and again through the open pair. And it's called asymmetric guide knot because you have now three loops up here and two loops down here. And this is a knot that doesn't open easily 
when there is no force or no pull on it. So for what we do today, this is my preferential knot to tie into the rope. I'll show you that one in detail right now. Okay, as I said, for this tie-in knot, just do an ordinary overhand like this. You tie it through your tie-in loops here, and then you follow it back. Something like this. That was fairly easy, right? And the only thing you do now is you loosen up those two lower loops, go around once more and stick it through like this. Voila. And then you can of course go ahead and tighten everything a little bit more so that you have a clean knot. But that's your asymmetric guide knot. Okay, you're tied into the knot into the rope, not into the knot. Um, and now you have to coil it around your body. I always start with just one piece of rope around my shoulders like this. Then I take the other piece into my hand and I'm somewhere on, on the height of my belay loop. And then I just start throwing it around my neck like this. With a little practice, you can get fairly swift. Um, I currently don't have a lot of practice since I'm grounded due to um, injuries since over a year. So yeah, I could do that even faster a few months ago, but I mean, we have a coil right here. Now we can decide if we want to go through the coil with our right arm or with the left one. I prefer the left side. And now we have our coil here. You can pull on that coil or change the direction to get a little bit more pull onto your harness or a little bit left. You can pull everything a little bit tighter like this. Um, just make sure that it is not dangling around and then you should be good. Now here comes the first very important principle. I see a lot of people that now take a carabiner, put it through their belay loop, put a clove hitch onto the rope and tie the rope to the carabiner like this. Now this is a very bad idea because if there would be pull on any of those coils of any of those rope parts, then the rope will go up and start strangulating you, strangling you. So that's not a good move. Don't do that. So the first principle, whatever happens to any coil, they are not allowed to close down around your body or around your neck. And how do we do that? We put away that carabiner and we take the rope that is going to our climbing partner, thread it through our belay loop so that we have a nice a nice long bite that we can, uh, uh, we can work with. And now you can either go around your, the coil from behind or from the front. It doesn't make a huge difference. I actually prefer going around from the front. It always feels that I have it then tied down a little bit neater. And how often you go around is actually up to you. One time is generally enough. I prefer two to three times because then it just stabilizes the coil even a little bit more. Okay, now we have made sure that regardless what happens to this one, it can't close because it is tied down here to the belay loop. In the next step, we have to fix this rope around the working rope. And that goes just like this as a first step with an overhand knot. Okay. And now you can see, no matter what happens, if there is pull on this, that's the second principle, all the load is transferred to the belay loop. So it's on a proper point on your harness that is actually meant to take load, right? If you would take it with a carabiner onto your leg loop or something like that, 
that's not a good idea. And the last point, the last principle that also has to be fulfilled is regardless what happens here, it is not allowed to close the loops around your, your body or your neck. So if I pull here, nothing happens. If I pull here, nothing happens to the loop. And the force is on the right spot on my climbing harness. Now, doing only an overhand is not enough because this is now our tie-in knot. We want to have a little bit more safety when it comes to that. So the first thing you can do is just take a little carabiner, go through the sling and tie it to something, preferably the belay loop. Now this knot is not able to open and you're secure. Theoretically, you could start climbing like this. If you don't want to use a carabiner, there is an alternative that I'll show you now, or there are exact two alternatives actually. The first one is, we're going back. Okay, you went around and instead going around here once and just making an overhand, you go around the working rope twice. You need a little bit more rope for that. And you can see you will have a cross here that ties the rope down and then go through both. Like this. And this knot is now sufficiently safe to not have it protected additionally with a, with a carabiner. You could start like this without an issue. The third variant, and I will show you all these variant a little bit later in detail. The third variant is that you just go around once. You tie a simple overhand, for example, because you have very cold hands and you can't get to tie it properly. You think it's too complicated, something like that. So you just take one overhand. Now you take the working rope, turn it around once, stick this one through and then tighten it. This is something that comes especially from the Swiss mountain guide course. Um, it has a very Swiss name, it's called an Iggy Ledge. And um, you can also secure your rope like that. The last version I want to show you on how to do this knot is a little bit different, but very, very cool. You take the rope, you give it a loop, and you pull a loop out of this. You thread this one through, and then you just pull until everything is tight. And now you give it a tuck until those double strands come through the original eye, like this and then you tighten it down, you put that one away. And if you look very closely, the knot that you have here is actually a bowline. So it's also a very secure knot. Um, this comes from the Austrian mountain guides and um, I found it very cool when a friend of mine showed it to me. Those are the four ways how you can tie into a coil, how to finish the coil and I'll show you every one of them now in detail. Okay, let's look at the basics first. We have here the rope that goes to our climbing partner. We thread it through our belay loop like this and then we go around all our coils. Feel free to already tie them down a little bit more neatly. I'm going twice generally because I found it a little bit more compact here. And then for the first technique to tie it off, you just take the rope that goes to your partner. You go around once like this with an overhand and then you thread it through the rope. Make sure that it's a little bit tidy like this. And since this is not good enough for really tying in, just take a little carabiner, tie it to the top of the loop 
and to your belay loop. And now you're good to go like this. The second version is pretty similar to the first version. You go around the working rope not once, but twice towards the upper end. And twice and make sure you go all the way around. You can see I'm really around twice. And then you just go through the open tunnel and you tie it closed, tidy it. And here you are, good to go with the second version. For the third version, you again go around once and through, tidy it. And now you don't use a carabiner, but you take that rope, give it a loop and put this loop through it. And the special thing is here that in this loop, the rope goes over itself. So it's not a loop like this, where it would basically just empty out. It's really a loop like this, so that the rope that goes out is inside the knot. Like this. That's also fine. And last but not least, look. let's look at the Austrian version. I'm letting go of that loop for a second so that I can demonstrate it better with this end. We're taking a loop, and pulling the working rope through it. And for this, you have to make sure that you're fairly close to your belay loop, right? It just makes things easier. Then you stick your loop through this, like this, and then you just pull on it. And at a certain point, this rope will pop through down here like this. And then you just need to close it, store that away, and you're good to go with your bowline. Okay, I hope you found that somewhat helpful. If you have any questions, if you know other ways to tie off your rope, please put it in the comment. If, that, if you liked that video, please give us a thumbs up. In any case, follow this channel. And yeah, thank you for watching. I really appreciate your time. I, I really do. And yeah, I'll see you next time.